down. Four to go. Lewis has the wicket. Just as Alan Border, the Australian captain, had joined Bradman and Bardsley as the Australians to make over 500 runs at Lords. He's been dismissed by Chris Lewis. 77 he made. 121 balls, that's good going, and 12 balls. Well, it was a good innings by Alan Border, not just for the stroke play, which was excellent. You might say he's a little unlucky with that, but uh, Chris Lewis deserved a wicket. He's tried to bowl quite quick at times. But Alan Border's innings was good because he came in, he saw the situation. His earlier batsman had plundered the England bowling, put Australia in a superb position. Then he came in and he played shots right from the word go. He took the attack to the England bowlers. Yes, that was a splendid performance from Alan Border. 77, and he made them very quickly, just in the right way to push Australia up to 592. One more run added after his dismissal. Four wickets down, and an excellent performance from the Australians there all through the day. They've made 300 runs in the day, and that is a very, very entertaining effort from the tourists. The bowling figures for England, well, there's nothing very pretty about that. The pacemen had problems. Lewis, two for 122, but I was impressed by the spinners. Such didn't get a wicket, but I thought he bowled well. And I'm very impressed with the way Tufnell came back after getting a hammering from the Australians early on yesterday. 39 over three maidens and two for 129 is an excellent effort in that very big score put up by the touring side. Covering successfully, thank goodness, from an operation. This is the way the Australians began the day. 592 for four, three centuries, a 99, 77, and Steve Waugh unbeaten on naught with David Boone there on 138. We join play now in the third over of the day. Chris Lewis is the bowler. Six runs have been added, and David Boone is taking strike. Deliberate stroke from David Boone. Six hundred up for Australia. Last time uh, England conceded. 600 runs in an innings here at Lords, which against West Indies, 1973. And not far over Phil Tufnell's head. I don't say he went up for it like a, a ruck man in Australian rules, but um, it wasn't a bad effort. I think he got a bit wrong-footed just to start with, and he, he was trying to jump off his wrong foot. Yep. A couple for Boone. Brings him to 150. <laughs> landmark after landmark. number 13 well again this time an on drive on the up he takes this it's a good length ball nothing wrong with that from Chris Lewis but it's disappeared to the boundary 615 for four looks as if he's going to play shots at every opportunity, David Boone. There's three men within, what, 15 yards there to save that sort of shot. Nobody moves. So I just think on this type of slow surface that the faster the bowlers bowl, the quicker it goes off the bat. And this particular over has been a very good example of the ball disappearing once the bowler gives the batsman some pace, the ball coming on.
It was only really stroked away, so the outfield clearly getting quicker. Slow on Thursday. Slightly quicker yesterday, and now that one it was only a push. Three runs later, Alan Border declared the Australian innings closed at 632 for four. David Boone, 164. A wonderful innings from him. And Steve Waugh there playing a supporting role. 13 not out, 16 extras, 632 for four. The bowling figures for England, just two men there with wickets. Tufnell, two for 129, didn't bowl this morning. And Lewis, two for 151. 433 needed for England to avoid the follow-on. Here's the first ball at the England innings. The Hughes is the bowler, and the skipper, Graham Gooch, is taking a strike. Movement first up. Yeah, a bit of noise around the ground. Well, we saw some movement last night, to be fair, and we've seen a little bit this morning. And this is the first ball of the innings, right in that slot, just outside off stump. man Brendan Julian he's the fielder Mel he was just over pitching and uh, Goose delighted to get under one straight away oh dismissive <laughs> only a short arm jab Well, I think that shows the time you're on this pitch. It was looking to come forward a bit, and then, because it was short, you just swatted it away to square leg. Well, the dive of Gully was so spectacular, and Shane Warne stayed down so long, it appeared as if he'd had the ball in the right hand. But in fact, the ball was way away to the boundary at third man. close. Uh, Graham Gooch uh, puts his head down and umpire Shepard leaves his finger down. Must have been pretty close. Shep wasn't smiling. I think height probably came into it above the knee roll. That's well played. Just off the hip. And you have the feeling that Hughes is trying to dig one short to Atherton to persuade him to pop one into the hands of one of those short legs, but that was well played, played downwards, and with enough bottom hand in to go for four. That's in the air. He caught it. A lump of turf came up. It looked for all the world like the ball dropping out of the hands, but that was a super catch. Tim May was the catcher. Graham Gooch goes for 12, and England are 33 for one. Well, Mo Hughes has done it again. Always showing aggression, always experimenting, trying to take wickets. Bangs it in again. Gooch goes for the hook. Didn't quite get across far enough. Top edged it. The ball went high a long time. And that's a good catch by Tim May. There you see the lump of turf come up. And we thought that was a ball at first, but no, he's delighted. One more look. Dug in short, and Graham Gooch just finding the ball on him a bit quick, climbing on him a little bit quickly. He's lucky, Tim May, that he went to his right hand, but he had to move backwards. The ball was running away from him. It was beautifully judged. And he quite enjoys that. 33 for one. Beautifully played. Maybe a different matter when Merv Hughes drops one short, but uh, Mark War is uh, an easier touch. 
now change out in the centre. Tim May is coming on at the pavilion end. Well, already there is uh, more spin there for May than was the case for such or Tufnell. Whether that continues is another matter. Well, he's not going to get that for the simple reason that he spun it too far. Are we uh, playing on the same pitch out there? Oh. Got the top spinner from Tim May. Up uh, has got it away down towards the nursery end. Brendan Julian, the fielder, he's the subfielder for Craig McDermott and a very good all-round fielder. Two more runs added to take the England total up to 44 for one at lunch. The man out, Graham Gooch, for 12, the wicket going to Hughes. Atherton is 20 not out and Gatting one not out. So the bowling figures, Hughes, seven overs, two maidens and one for 16. But down on that bottom line, a very, very interesting statistic. Three overs, one maiden, none for four for Tim May. I wondered, looking at it, if it was the same pitch. He really did turn the ball a long way in those three overs. We join play now in the second over after lunch. There are two runs added, and Tim May is bowling to Mike Gatting. That one had better go. Good cutter, Mike Gatting. Brings a 50 up for England. Yeah, it's just getting this ball a bit too wide, Tim May. A nice, easy ball to cut for Mike Gatting. Oh, it's bowled in. Almost the sucker ball, tossed up, just outside off stump, and through the gate on the drive. And really, that's... Uh, a pretty ordinary dismissal as far as the batsman's concerned but all credit to the bowler he'd just been cut for four he's tossed this ball up and that is a bitter blow to england and certainly to gatting well it was a sucker ball to mike gatting it enticed him to drive he threw it right up you can see the extra flight the loop up it goes nice and juicy there to drive big spin ball and as it pitched it turned it invites the batsman to drive, it's up there a long time, but it pitch turn, it was a classical slow bowler's delivery. And now at 50 for two, and England in trouble, Robin Smith. Immediately Robin Smith comes into bat, Shane Warne comes on to bowl. Oh, he looked as though he's going to sweep it. So he's going to sweep this Robin Smith there and then he changes his mind and he changed it well in the end nice footwork and you certainly won't get many playing worn from the crease but he's a very difficult customer to get down to because he does spin it so much Lovely shot. As good an off drive as you could get. <laughs> Difference with that shot and that of Mike Gatting's that Smith was a foot or two down the pitch and absolutely right to the pitch of the ball. Well, it was neat, quick footwork. Got him to the pitch of the ball. He was very positive in what he was doing. Look at that, beautifully played. This was a great effort at short mid-wicket by Alan Border. Robin Smith getting it on the fall, it going quickly. Yeah. 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 Has, uh, picked up a two and a four from uh, the first part of this Tim May over. Oh, 
short again from Tim May and there's no percentage in bowling there to Robin Smith. Very strong cutter, Robin Smith. There's nothing subtle about his batting. If he sees a loose one, he gives it the full treatment. Wonderfully well done by Healy. But the umpire says that he wants adjudication. This will be full of interest. Well, he won't need too much adjudication for that, I wouldn't think. Although stumpings are notoriously difficult for television. You have to be certain whether or not the bat is on the ground. Robin Smith was a long way out, then made the effort to get back. Healy took it beautifully, did all the right things, and the bat is still in the air, or is it? That's one of the problems with television. Is the bat actually in the air, or has it reached the ground? Robin Smith is out. Chris Balderstone is the third umpire. No easy task being locked away in a darkened room there. So Robin Smith is stumped by Healy of May for 22. Face 43 balls and the second wicket for Tim May. strokes off the slow bowlers lock them straight down the ground yes Graham Hick never frightened to hit the ball back over the bowler's head there's a very straight bat you've got to get right to the pitch when you're doing that to a leg spinner well the shouts there were from Healy and uh, from Warren the thought that um, it couldn't have been all that far away from a leg stump. I'm not to get through the shot too quickly. Just more or less maybe brushing the glove or something, I don't know, and uh, very close to that leg stump. Good shot. Bit of footwork. Just a flick of the wrist, so I don't think he's got the full power in this. but three valuable runs to Michael Atherton. Claws around the ground because the 100 comes up for England. Oh, by word, Atherton was lucky. That extra relaxed sloping bat and the ball running back well this is almost a repeat of how Robin Smith got out of Old Trafford see how the bat was angled backwards the real problems here for Atherton but Tim May moved around the wickets at the beginning of this over and already is caused many problems to Mike Atherton. Beautifully placed. <clears throat> That'll be some relief for Mike Atherton, who has just struggled a bit lately, against uh, Tim May especially. And that ball was very well taken. Placement was the thing again there by Mike Atherton. Just three runs in this for him, but uh, it's beautifully driven straight. And he got right on top of the spin. That was the crucial factor. Yeah, much 
Rushmore out to that delivery. Did well to do that because he almost made it into a Yorker. And suddenly the runs are coming for Atherton. Although he's only gone halfway forward sometimes, and we've been critical, when he's gone back, he's gone right back, and he flicked that away off the pads quite superbly. Yes, this is a good shot. Timing, using the wrist. to it quickly but uh, it's going to be interesting here my views he worked uh, Graham Mick out at Old Trafford but it's, it's hostile stuff and this is what I do like about Merv Hughes throwing the ball in the middle of a, a hot afternoon with no real pace in the pitch he's looking to try things and Graham Hick is ducking almost instinctively without watching the ball He's got him again. Well, if ever a bowler is getting a batsman's number, it's Hughes on to Hick. Not exactly predictable, but not too great a surprise also. He's worked him over, he's unsettled him, and then he's forced him into a shot like that. And England now up against it, 123 for four. Well, he has been unsettled by these short balls. I was just saying he was playing it the best way by getting out of the way, not trying to attack it or just stand there and freeze in. He was ducking. Ducking's the best answer to a fast bowler bowling short balls or bounces. Duck. Don't play them. Let him waste his effort. Instead, really another sucker ball like Mike Gatting. Alex Stewart. 20 minutes before tea. And uh, England right on the brink now at 123 for four. And there's Atherton's 50. He's waited some while for it. It's 10th 50 for England. It's gone up 148 balls, six fours. A slightly happier England balcony. Atherton on 52 and England 126 for four. Man Hughes is nothing short of a magician. Out of nothing and nowhere, he conjures all sorts of wicket taking options. Quick glare at Stewart, who's nearly number three for him. Well, Merv Hughes causing another indiscreet shot from an England batsman. <laughs> Given him, and Alex Stewart playing that leg side. But Hughes has done it again. Stewart goes LBW to Hughes for three. And England now 131 for five. Well, another England batsman being dismissed by a fairly straightforward delivery. Pitch well up. Might even been going down leg side. It might have been a little bit harsh, that decision to me. It looks to me as if this ball in from the stump vision is going down. And I think if I was batting, I'd be very upset with that. Uh, that's a very awkward dismissal for England. Alex Stewart going just before T, 131 for five. And those three bowlers, Hughes and May and uh, Warren, the leg spinner, have done awful damage out there. The bowling figures, well, it shows up there that Hughes has bowled 11.5 uh, overs, three maidens, and taken three for 23. May has two for 46, and Warren bowled much better than that, none for 34 from 13 overs and three maidens. We join play now in the first full over after tea. There's one run added. Shane Warne is the bowler, and Chris Lewis is taking strike. Oh, that's well bowled. 
as plumb as anything you will ever see. Well, this leg spinner here from Shane Warren, I suppose it was missing leg stump and missing off stump, but hit in middle about halfway up. And everybody could give this out. Chris Lewis made 100 against uh, the leg spinners in India at the end of the tour. But he's shown nothing so far to indicate he'll create all that many problems for Shane Warne. That's six down now for England, 132 on the board. had his half, half century up to 14. Last stroke by Atherton. He's played uh, some very good late cuts today, nothing better than that one. Yes, it's the way he's played all day with his timing, Michael Atherton. He's not tried to hit anything too hard. Lovely timer of the ball. Just a deft shot here. Waited for it. Used the pace of the ball. Shot. In fact, that's why Merv and Alan Border had the man out on the boundary for the pull shot a few minutes ago. Well, it's a terrific shot from Neil Foster, banged in. He was obviously looking for it and waiting for it, and he plays it as well as any batsman, getting right over it, turning the wrists and hitting it down. But I actually think that's a good ploy by Merv Hughes. And if I was him, I would be letting Neil Foster have a couple more. But really don't mind giving away the odd four like that. They just want a wicket. So another great shot. He does hook. He does like to play shots as Neil Foster. We get four for that. The authentic stroke on the offside. It's Tim Mayborn Ospinus from the nursery end. His line is different and uh, there are runs to be had from an off-spinner unless he really can come to terms with the difference of slope from the nursery end. Yes, it's one of the most difficult ends in cricket to bowl off-spinners from. In fact, Tim must played here for a lot of years and he didn't often see him bowl from that end. Oh, Foster, what have you done? We're going to find out. Well, of all things, there's never been a stumping settled by television in world cricket in a five-day test before today, and now we've got a second one. And he's gone round and going down and almost in the same situation as the first one and a difficult one for Balderstone that one is tighter that would be a surprise if it's given out and in fact Foster's got away with it when I say got away with it he's got away with a stroke and he'll Foster pats his heart <laughs> given him Foster stood couldn't believe it 
Merv Kitchen, umpire Kitchen had no doubt. And that is the seventh wicket. Foster having been caught by Border off the bowling of Warren. And England now 167 for seven. Well, certainly batting and putting everything together here. This is from the ground level and clearly onto boot and ankle first. Oh, that looks straight from the boot to me to the fielder. Andrew Caddick. make Warren so awful for tail enders. He, he really just took them up. He gets it in at the legs. And that one just flying away off the pad. But uh, when you play on the straight back, trying to hit through square leg mid-wicket, uh, it's a very risky shot. Shane Warren. Atherton playing well. Looks two different games, one when he's on strike and one when somebody else is. But of course, with the tail there, that's to be expected. Let's have a look at this one pushed away on the onside. Oh! Well, that was nearly fits and stops. Yes, that has gone very close to the stumps, although England would feel that they're probably due a little bit of luck. Hit on to the back of the right leg and very close to leg stump. Perhaps just uh, a little lazy with that shot. Oh, that's bowled him. Bowled him. Back onto the stumps. Bale comes off. And the ploy of going round the wicket seems to have unsettled Mike Atherton, ended his innings and caused him problems all through the over the end of a good innings, a gutsy innings, bowled by Warren for 80, 174 for 8. Matty Yorker out of this one, uh, Mike Atherton, jammed down on it once again, he hit it into his uh, legs, back onto the stumps. A very good innings from Atherton, 9 fours. And he'll be disappointed it ended in such a fashion and 20 runs short of a century. Peter Such. Is Caddick off the mark? Yes, he is. I think the shot here uh, was almost the attempted late cut from Andrew Caddick, not quite. Done it again. This time three. Getting quite adept at that uh, late cut, Andrew Caddick. edge that's racing away to the boundary. You'll be pleased with that, Will Peter Such, but he certainly don't get out playing shots. Well, 
might hit him on the face mask, I think. It's turned, but at least he's getting forward, you see. Both these tail enders trying to get forward, play within their limits. That's turned, hit him straight in the face mask. Turned out of the bowler's foot marks, the rough. You get a good see, see the turf come up, the powdery when it pitched. Well done. That's well bowled by Warren. He's had a good spell since coming back from the uh, nursery end. These two batsmen, Caddick and Such, have done the job in the sense that they've uh, protected Gooch and Atherton up to 10 minutes to six, which means the openers won't have to go out again. Yeah, she'll be disappointed to get out, but uh, he played forward. He's been playing forward nearly all the time. And he's done as well as you could expect from a tail ender with the wrist spinner bowling into the rough outside his leg stump. Four more runs were added to take the final total up to 193 for nine at the close of play, but that is a disaster for England and a triumph for Australia who bowled and fielded very well indeed. Just uh, up the top there, Michael Atherton played an outstanding innings of 80 in that total of 193, but the bowling figures tell the story. Hughes, 19 overs, five maidens, three for 50. May, two for 57. And Shane Warne, four for 54 from 31 overs and 10 maidens. And the state of the match at the end of the third day's play, well, that in itself tells the story. 632 for four and England, 193 for nine. England needing 240 more runs to avoid the follow-on. Oh,